Welcome back to Does It Go Hard, a show where I review movies, video games, and more. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing the latest fighting game from Warner Brothers, Multiverses. So Multiverses is pretty much another Smash Bros. clone. Instead of having uh, video game characters, it has characters that are owned mainly by Warner Brothers or HBO or Adult Swim and all that crazy shit. After the mild success of Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, Warner Brothers really found an opportunity to kind of do the exact same thing, uh, only difference is uh, doing it right this time. <laughs> because Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, while it was fun at first, it just got to a point where people stopped caring for the game, but Multiverses really, really looked like it was going to fix a lot of the issues that Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl had from the beginning. I was still very skeptical because to me, it still just kind of looked like another Smash Bros knockoff. But after playing the game for a couple of weeks, what do I think of the game overall? I have good news and bad news. The good news is that this game is actually pretty fun. My biggest worry is that this game was just going to completely take everything that Smash did and just completely do a horrible job of trying to replicate that concept. But what Multiverses did pretty good was to take the Smash Bros concept and somehow still find a way to make it unique and not feel like it's just completely copying the Smash formula. I mean, there's still blueprints of Smash in the game, but for the most part, you can still tell that the developers really did their best to make this game stand out from Smash. The gameplay is surprisingly really fun. Not only that, but it's also complex, which was something I didn't really <laughs> think would happen to this game, but it, it really caught me off guard because it really did remind me a lot of Smash in the best way possible. You know kind of how Smash, each character has a specific moveset to them that represents a certain installment or various installments that that character took part in in the gaming industry? It's kind of the same here in Multiverses. Each character from different uh, media IPs, they all have movesets that in some way represent something from the source material that they come from. And that's really cool, which makes the combat definitely more interesting, but also it makes it a lot more detailed and you can really tell that the developers put a lot of time and passion into making the movesets for each one of the characters feel distinct from each one. The online is actually pretty good as well, even though sometimes I did have some lag issues, I think that was just me with my internet problems. Every time I play online games, it's when somebody else in my family in the house is like using Disney Plus or HBO Max or Netflix, which completely f***s up my entire like internet while I'm playing online games. But the online is still pretty good, it still plays pretty smoothly, and when the online does work smoothly, it does work to its fullest potential. Again, I was surprised because to me this really just felt like it was going to be another Smash copy, but it somehow not only found a way to be its own thing, but it also kind of surpassed Smash in one of the biggest things that is a huge turnoff for, I mean Nintendo in general. Nintendo's online is complete shit. It is garbage. <laughs> the roster, while it's not huge, the roster is not like the size of a Mortal Kombat game or Street Fighter, and it is no way near the size of the roster of Smash Bros, especially Smash Bros Ultimate. But still, the roster is a decent size, it still has a good amount of characters where you're like, okay, it's not a completely short cast of characters. But there is an issue with the roster, which I'll get into later. Overall, I, I was actually surprised of how much detail they went into each one of the characters. And the fact that even though the roster is not huge, you can at least appreciate that they did put a lot of work into making the characters distinct from each other. And graphically, I think the game actually looks pretty good. Now, yes, it doesn't have super hyper realistic graphics, but I did appreciate the art direction that they went for this game. The art direction actually feels like it's its own thing. It's not trying to copy the art direction of Smash. It's not trying hard to be Smash, and that's something that I really appreciated. And again, even though it does take a lot of inspiration from Smash, it still feels like its own thing, it still feels like the game has an identity of its own, where you can set it apart from being a Smash clone, which again to me is surprising. So what are the issues with the game? I mean, I've been praising the game for the most part, so you must be thinking that I am loving this game, 
the game is completely fine it is perfect there's nothing wrong with it uh while i did find myself enjoying the game for the most part i cannot say that i love it in fact there is a lot of things in this game that do piss me the f off so this is a free to play game which i mean there's nothing wrong with free to play games my biggest issue with these games is that they always try to find to hyper monetize the shit out of these games just because it is free to me that is the worst thing out of any game that is free to play is that they are always trying to find any other way possible to gain money out of the game which i don't think there's anything wrong with that but they find probably the scummiest reasons or ways to try to steal money from you which i absolutely fucking hate Oh, and you want to know what's really funny? That for a free-to-play game, it's hilarious that a free-to-play game has three versions that are payable. That's right. This game, this free-to-play game has three packs that actually cost real f***ing money, which only include like a couple of extra bonus bullshit that mean absolutely fucking nothing. And as the versions go on, they get more expensive. It is stupid. Like, the third version of the game costs a hundred dollars. It is the dumbest shit I've seen, and I f***ing hate it when games do this dumb shit. I absolutely f***ing detest it. And while I was kind of praising the roster for it being not huge, but still somewhat reasonable, it is very much bullshit that 90% of the roster is kind of locked behind a paywall. You can play most of the roster because most of the roster is behind a paywall, either from in-game currency or real money, and it is bullshit. Now, I know that there's this weird thing that every week they'll have like three characters that you can play for free, which is fine, but it still doesn't make up a good excuse for why you are kind of shutting down the rest of the roster for the rest of the players. I think it's still really stupid in my opinion. The worst thing is the fact that the prizes are stupid insane. Like the game either wants you to grind until you are exhausted so you can finally unlock a character that you really want to play or you just say fuck it let me just bring out my credit card and pay for this shit with real money it is stupid i hate it and you might say well other fighting games have dlc yes but from the beginning these fighting games at least give you a full reasonable roster but it's not like they are making you pay to play scorpion or sub-zero in mortal kombat it's not like they're making you pay to play ryu or ken or chun li in street fighter it's not like they're making you pay to play mario or donkey kong or link in smash it is stupid here they are making you pretty much pay to play the characters that you actually want to play and it is stupid i hate it and while i know that the developers necessarily didn't want to do this I know that some stupid fucking higher up at Warner Brothers said, no, you gotta add this shit because we need to make money out of this game. I'm not blaming the developers for adding this stuff or doing these really shitty practices, but it still bothers the fuck out of me that it's still here. Oh, and by the way, there's also skins and other cosmetics like sprites and emotes. Oh, and how do you get those? Oh, through a game pass that, by the way, you only get the cool shit if you buy the battle pass. It is stupid. This is another thing that I hate about free-to-play games and in general of modern gaming. Why can't I just play the game and gain all of these goodies and digital fucking garbage that even though it means nothing, it's still cool to see. Why can't I just get it through playing the game and progressing through the game naturally by just playing the game instead of making me pay for this shit i mean i know that this is stupid shit to complain and probably i'm the only one that feels about this about the panel pass but when i come from a time where there was a time where you used to play a game and you unlocked shit through playing the game this is upsetting this is absolutely upsetting and infuriating and overall this is just kind of a personal thing for me i, I just don't see myself playing this game like often in long terms i, I mean I, I i hate to say that because i really do think the game is fun okay even though it has these really annoying things that really bug the shit out of me i still acknowledge that the game is incredibly fun and it's surprising how much actual effort they put into something that looks just like a smash copy but i just don't really see myself playing this game more than maybe 
few times in the future. It's not a game that I'm really gonna stick around for, like a Mortal Kombat, or for a Street Fighter, or for Smash, or for some other fighting games out there, you know? I, I just don't really have the full interest in really putting a lot of investment into multiverses. But again, that's just me. That's a personal thing. It's a personal gripe that I'm not even holding accountable to the game itself or to the developers. This is just a personal thing of mine. That's just how, how I'm feeling, okay? But overall, I do gotta say that this game goes absolutely raw, okay? Now, I, I would say that while the game goes raw, I would say it's more of a low goes raw. But nonetheless, the game still goes pretty raw. It, it's a low ghost raw because, again, it has those things that really just bug the shit out of me, that are really annoying to me personally. But, again, I still acknowledge that the game did have a lot of effort put into it, and the game is still incredibly fun. So, don't take this as me completely shitting on the game. This is just my opinion. For somebody that really expected nearly nothing from this game, I was pleasantly surprised for the most part, okay? Even though it had its fallbacks, uh, I will still admit that the game is fun and the developers actually put a lot of good effort into making it its own thing other than just kinda copying Smash. Next week, I'll be making a review for Lightyear now that it's been in Disney Plus for a while. Finally watch it and make a review for you guys because I've actually been quite interested in watching Lightyear. I just didn't really have the time to go watch it in theaters. But now that it's on Disney Plus, I'm very much excited to watch it and to talk about it to you guys. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribe if you wanna keep updated with my content. As always, Good day, good night, and stay safe.